So let's go through this quick check. You from last class could have done this two different ways. One, solve this, get this back in slope intercept form, solve it like that. Or solve it by your x and y intercepts. I will say if you did x and y intercepts, you'll end up with a fraction for the x. So I'll show both ways. So if we solve this for our slope, we would get rid of the x terms, subtract it to the other side. Rearrange this so that we have our x first. And then divide everything by 4. y equals negative 3 over 4x plus 2. And then if you graph that, we would start at our y-intercept of 2. And this is a negative, so we can go up 3 and to the left 4, or down 3 and to the right 4 as many times as possible until you fill up your graph. So, one, two, three, and that would be it, because anything else would run off the graph. So then your line will look something like this. negative, going through all those points, if you use your slope and y-intercept. If you use your x and y-intercept, you would cover up one term, solve this part, Sorry, set this equal so it's 4y equals 8 and then solve this first. So you would have the y intercept of 2, which we have, but the other part is going to give you a fraction. That's what? 2 and 2 thirds? So somewhere here. And you would just have these two points, and then your line that goes through everything. So you would still have to extend your line through the graph, you just wouldn't put your slope points. Okay. Remember that you have a choice if it doesn't specify, if it doesn't say do this by intercepts or do this by um, converting it, doing the slope and intercept, you have a choice. Do you have any questions on that? It occurred to me yesterday that I did not show you how to put this in the graph. So if you don't have your calculator, go grab that and use your calculator. So you know how to check yourself. So let's say we had solved this and we got this equation. So y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 2. In your calculator, you're going to y equals to the top. And we're going to type in that equation, except it already has a y, so we're not going to put that part in just everything else. So negative at the bottom, the 3 fourths, so alpha y equals, to get your fraction. You can get x two different ways, by just clicking the button next to alpha, or by pressing alpha and then x at the bottom. So up to you how you want to do that. And then plus 2. So you could do one of two things. I'm going to show you them both. You could just go to the graph. So hit graph. It's going to graph it like you graphed it. But there aren't real points there. And my eyesight is bad sometimes. So if I'm trying to find specific points, I'm not sure. Is this on the line? Is it not on the line? Is this at the point that I graph? I'm not sure. So what you could do instead is go into the table. So that's in blue above the graph. So second in the graph. You'll see some fractions, but we're going to ignore those. We're just going to look at the points that we plotted. So we have 0, 2. That's one of them. 
if yours doesn't start here, you may have to scroll up or down to find zero two. And then we have, I'll go to the left first, negative 4, 5. So I'm going to go up until I see negative 4, negative 4, 5, that works. The next point, negative 8, 8. So I'm going to keep scrolling until I see that point. Negative 8, 8, that works. Then I'm going to go to the right. So it's not going to show that x value unless I do something specific with it. Right. So it won't show that, but that's okay. But then we have 4, negative 1, which I went past, and 8, negative 4. So that's a good way to check yourself. Do my points match the points in the graph? Because if not, something's wrong. I should probably fix this graph, regraph it, whatever. Questions about how the graph works. You have the calculator, you will have it on the quiz and test. Feel free to use this, double check yourself. So, our notes today are on our last lesson for this unit, which means our quiz and test are coming up next week. Quiz is going to be uh, Monday. Yes, quiz is Monday. Test is Wednesday. slash summarize it so don't feel like you have to write down every single word but if you want to also write down every single word that's okay so for our intercepts we have x intercepts we have y intercepts our x intercepts the graphic definition is the points that cross or touch the x-axis so graphically it crosses or touches the x-axis Algebraically, it's the point where y, or f of x, the function, is zero. So we kind of like the opposite. If you're looking for an x-intercept, your y value is zero. Then for your y-intercept, graphically, it's the point where it crosses or touches the y-axis. So wherever the function crosses or touches the y-axis, those are y-intercepts. Algebraically, it's the point where x is 0. So if you're looking for a y-intercept, your x value is going to be 0. When we write our intercepts, they should be written as an ordered pair. So in parentheses, blank, comma, blank, and parentheses. I'll write that in. So not only do you need to know how to find intercepts on a graph and algebraically, but you also need to know that x-intercepts, specifically, have different names. Okay, let's see. Okay, so when you hear these th four words, they're all interchangeable. x-intercepts, roots, solutions, zeros. Those all mean x-intercepts. They do not mean y-intercepts. So you can just put those words, or you can put the whole thing, the definition. So I'll read through those. Um, roots, you usually hear with quadratic functions, so when we get into our quadratics later in the year, you'll hear roots a lot. Solutions, as we were talking about in the last unit, it makes the equation true if we put it back in. Um, zeros because it makes the y equals zero. But these are all interchangeable. So if you see something that says find the x-intercepts, but something else says find the zeros, something else says find the solutions, something else says find the roots, they're all talking about the same thing. X-intercepts. Once 
everyone has written down all the all the definitions, whatever they want to write from this, we'll move on. If you've got a function like this, most of the time, if the circle is centered around the origin 0, 0, all the points are going to be similar. But if it's shifted at any point in time, then they're not. Okay, questions on three. Number five, where are your x intercepts? So in this section, you guys should ace this part. Next part is a little bit hard. Right? 
So I'm going to show you how to do this by hand when it looks like this format, and then we're going to switch gears and show a different format, and then we're going to switch gears again and show you how to do this on the calculator, so you can double check your work. So let's find, let's find the y intercept first. Because we already talked about slope-intercept form, if you see that this is in slope-intercept form, this is f of x instead of y, it's really the same thing. But if you see that it's in that form, where we have mx plus or minus e, this is going to be your y-intercept. So we would put in 0, negative e. We wouldn't have to solve anything. We could just look at that last number. That's our y-intercept. Done. For our x-intercept, if we're solving this algebraically, we know our x-intercept, our y value is 0. So if this helps, you can replace this f of x with y, rewrite it. And then where y is, you're going to put 0 in. So you're going to replace the value. And then we're just going to solve for x. So how would we do that here? So not subtract because we're already subtracting, but the opposite, adding, add 8. And then divide both sides by 4. So once you find what the x value is, you still have to write it as an ordered pair. So this would be 2. You put 0 in for y, so that would be your y value. Even with these, your x and y value, whatever you're not solving for, is still going to be 0. Another, then we'll ask, I'll ask for any questions on this page and then we'll move on. So let's do number four. So starting with the y intercept, what would that be? Negative six. And if we had to write it in an order here. Zero, negative six. Zero, negative six. So that part's done. Now, I rewrote this to show you how we're putting zero in here. You don't have to rewrite it. You could just change this to zero. Change the whole thing, get rid of everything, and just change it to zero. But if it helps you to understand, we change this to y, or it's the same as y, and that's why we put zero in, do that. To solve for x here, what would we do first? Plus 6. Add 6 to both sides. To get rid of two thirds. Add, not add, subtract, not subtract either. So we can either divide the fraction or flip this and multiply on both sides. So you guys choose which of those you would rather. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So remember, you can do either or divide by the fraction or multiply by the reciprocal, but not a mixture of those. So 
when you multiply three halves by six or divide six by two thirds, what do we get? writing y-intercept, x-intercept, because when you solve it, I need to know that you know which one is which. You may put it in the right order, but I need to know which one is which. Why is it 9 equals x and not x equals 9? Same thing. That's the same thing. So the order, that part doesn't matter. Okay. Are there any others from this section that we want to see do go over and have questions about? So 6 will be similar to 4, so what would that y intercept be? 4. How would we write that as a order pair? 0, 4. in this section before we switch pages. Okay. So we are going to come back to this so that you understand how to do that and how that works. Um, go to this last page. So where these are no longer in slope intercept form, now they're in the standard form that we kind of saw the other day when we were graphing. It's going to be similar to how we were solving by intercept, but now we're actually going to be showing the work. We're not just covering up a term, but the process is similar. So with these, you should be showing how you put zero in for whichever one that you're solving for. So if I'm solving for my y-intercept, I have to put 0 in for x. This is like the cover-up method. This is actually the math that goes on behind that. But when we multiply this, it just becomes 0. And then we can just divide to get y by itself. But once you get that number, you still have to put it into um, the order pairs. 
So this would be 0, 8. And here you can go back and see, okay, for x you put in 0, y equals 8, and you can put those together in your ordered pair. We're going to do the same thing for x, but before we do that, what questions do we have on that process? Um, is it like absolutely necessary to show the eight times as well? No, so we're gonna, um, I'm sorry, this part, yes, but after that you can kind of skip that. So I'm gonna skip, start to skip that. So if I'm switching, now I have to find the x, so I'm gonna put the zero in. Not for x. But I know this is gonna be zero, so I can not put the next part. I don't have to put the zero. I can just drop that and put 8x and then solve from there. So that first step, necessary, yes. The next step, not necessary. You could do it if you would like. Still put that as an order pair. Sometimes, not all the time. The two numbers that you're working with, 8 and 3, happen to be your x and y intercepts. Not all the time, though. So don't assume, oh, I have these two numbers, that's going to be my x and y. Could be different. Right, let's do another, then I'll let you guys choose. Okay, so for number 2, if we do that same thing for the y intercept, I put... 0 in for 4, okay. 0 in for x, next to 4. The 4 times 0 goes away, we're just left with y equals 8, that is your y intercept. There's no more work left to be done. Except to write it as an ordered pair. But now for the x, we actually have to do the work. So same process, but now we're putting 0 in for y. We can just drop it and divide. how this process works, how we are getting these answers, anything like that. Okay. Are there any others in this section that you want to see do go over have questions about? Hi. I mean, you were also going to say hi. Five is going to help us with six. We do still do six every year. Okay. So this tells us where our x and such is. No work to be done there. However, you have to remember what type of equation this is going to be in order to write your wires up. Off to the side, I'm going to write my hoi box. If I have an x equals, so that's going to be a vertical line. You don't need to graph this, but I'm graphing it so you see it uh, visually. When x is negative 1, this would be this equation. Is this ever going to cross the y-axis? No. So for your y-intercept, you would just put none. And a doesn't exist. What are you supposed What we cannot write there is 0. Because that would mean there's a y-intercept at 0. But there's not. Would right. uh, undefined work as well? So undefined is slope. So we cannot write undefined. None doesn't exist in A, not applicable, any of those. Not zero, not under. Seven. Okay. Six would be the opposite of what we just did. So if we have questions about that, we'll come back to that. We're going to do seven. If we're finding our x intercept, we'll put zero in for y. And then uh, solve 4x.
break that as an ordered pair, which happens to be the same one as the one above. But when we put the zero in for x to solve for y, we won't really have to solve it. That would be our intercept. When you go to practice the delta math on this, there'll be questions that look like this, questions that look like the ones we just did, graphs, all different types of things. Any others in this section? Last page. I forgot about this. I wanted to show you this and then we'll do calculator stuff. This one is asking us to write an equation given the x and y intercepts. In order to write the equation, we need this slope. So you can graph the two points shown. Zero, zero, two, count the slope from these. So here we're going down to right three, or you can look at that as up to left three. Either way, this is going to be a negative slope. You're given your y-intercept, so we can put those two things together in y equals mx plus c. That would be the easiest way to do this. What you could also do, since you're given two points, is to find the slope algebraically, and then do this. I would advise just doing this. So, graphing the two points, finding the slope, putting the slope and y intercept together. Do we have questions on this process? Are there any others in this section you want to see if you go over the question as well? So this kind of combines slope and writing and graphing and intercepts all together. Which one? So we have negative one, zero, and zero, negative three. Count that slope. How far did we go down and to the right or up and to the left? Go up and then over or left, down and then over. Oh, you went up three times and So because one of these directions is a negative, we're going to have a negative slope. We can just simplify that to be negative three. How would we write our equation now that we have our slope and we're given our y intercept? questions left on this page. Go back to the calculator page. This page at the bottom has 
<laughs> so this works for any function, the ones we were doing, as long as it's in slow intercept form on the calculator. But while you're at home, I'll show you how you can check on Desmos. Um, let's put in this one. So in your calculator, in y equals, clear out whatever's there, just by saying clear. Type in that equation, x squared minus 16. So x either next to alpha or alpha x squared button is above the LOG button. And then what's 16 minus 16? So again, we can graph it. We can easily see our x-intercepts at negative 4 and positive 4. We could double check the table, but I'm also going to show you how you can find that without going to the graph portion. I'm sorry, without going to the table. So let's write down the x-intercepts so we don't forget them. Negative 4, 0, 4, 0. If I was looking for the y intercept, I can go into, I want to say it's race. The second trace, okay. So hit second and then trace. And we're going to go into value. <coughs> So second trace into value. If we're looking for a y value, a y x, uh, intercept, what would your x value be? Zero. So if I put in zero to enter, it's going to tell me what my y value is. So without doing anything, without moving the graph, without solving, I now have my y value. And I can write that down. So that works for all y values, y intercepts. If you can't see the x intercepts on a graph, you can go back into the table, look for when y is 0. Um, there's another process, but it's more complex, so we'll save that for if you absolutely need it. Okay. Do we have any calculator questions? Um, could you run through like the first two steps? Because I could. I forgot how you get to the uh... You're going to y equals? <coughs> Hit clear. Also that, yes. It is on the paper if you forgot or need to go back. But going to y equals, if there's something in here, hit clear. Type in whatever you need. I'm putting in something random. You can go to the graph and see if you can see the x and y intercepts. If you can, that's great. <laughs> If you can't, you can either go into the table and look for when x or y is 0. So y is 0 and x is 0. Okay. Or you can go into second trace. And those will help you find the other ones. Right? Last thing. The most. So this is when you're practicing does math slash at home practicing in general. Um, give me one of the equations on there, it doesn't matter which one. Anyone? 3x cubed minus 3x. 3x cubed, you said? Yeah. 3x. Oh, that's the. Okay. So, whatever you type into Desmos, one, if the variable is not x, make sure it's x. And then here, I made the lines thicker, bigger, easier to read. Then if you click on the graph, it will show x values, y values, highest points, lowest points. You can click on those points and see did you find the x and y intercepts correctly. So use Desmos at home while you're practicing Delta Math, all those things. Questions on Desmos? You guys have two Delta Math assignments due tomorrow, one on graphing, one on intercepts. 
If you've not done the two from last week on writing or the two from the week before on slope, you have delta math to do. If you have done them all and want extra practice, you can be working on more problems from the packet. Be working on one of those things. This time is yours, use it wisely.